Welcome, welcome, welcome to Vanessa's van life journey. I am Vanessa and I live in a van and her name is Treasure. Here she is in all glory. Her name is Treasure. So I am here to show y'all my nighttime routine. I am in a city parking lot right now. Uh, I did make it to Austin, Texas today and there was not any campsites available at the state park that i went to today so i have to spend the night in a city parking lot but the first thing that i do is look at my solar and see how much solar i have left and i've been sitting in the van for a little minute talking to you guys with my lights running and my refrigerator on and my solar is 12 at 12.2. I don't want my solar to run lower than 12 or 11.9. So I have to keep a lookout on that. And because I am doing city van life and it is stuffy in a van and it's like summertime and it gets hot, I want to run my fan. This is a little cheap fan that I got from Walmart. Uh, it is, it was like $15 or something like that. Uh, I have two of these. I left one in Arizona, but the one that I brought with me didn't work. So I had to buy another one. And this fan is really nice. I, it could come off of this thing. Let me show y'all. This fan could sit down on a table, on a desk, but it's perfect for van life, especially if you have solar or you're at a campsite and you have electricity because it could hang up. So I just put it... I just put it up here like this and push it in that thing like that and then I could turn it and I could move it down I could move it down that way or move it farther down this way wherever I want it and and I could adjust it, or I could set it on top of it, or I could turn around, turn it around while I'm driving. So that's the first thing I do. I check my solar to make sure I have enough to run my fan all night long. So I would try to conserve my solar during the day. I try to not have my lights on during the daytime. Uh, and I'll run my refrigerator during the day if I got good solar coming in. But if I don't have good solar coming in, I will not run my refrigerator during the day. And if I don't have anything in my refrigerator that I need to worry about staying cold, I don't worry about it. Like, I could have turned my refrigerator off all day because the only thing I have in my refrigerator basically is water. And I had some uh, ice water ice cream which would have been fine because i have frozen bottles of water in my freezer that's another thing when i am running my solar and i don't really have any food in my refrigerator or my freezer i keep water in my freezer so that way the bottles will freeze cold and that way some days when it's cloudy let me show y'all what i'm talking about thumbs up the live stream please so Today I was traveling. When I'm traveling, I don't put my mattress behind my seat. And I forgot, I didn't even put my seat back today. When I'm traveling, I don't put my mattress behind my seat so I could pull my seat all the way back and I could be comfortable. I forgot to pull my seat back today so I could be comfortable. So I did not pick my mattress up this morning and my mat. I have a mat, an exercise mat that I put on the floor underneath my mattress. So today, all I have to do is put my mattress down. But y'all see my ref my freezer back there? I have a freezer and a refrigerator. Let me show you guys. Excuse the drunk, the drunk, the junk on the cabinet. And excuse my butts that's about to be in y'all face because I'm about to show y'all something. And y'all know the van is tiny, okay? I can't see what y'all see. So, I'm going to stand this way so y'all, my book won't be in y'all face. But anyway, 
this is my refrigerator and I just turned my refrigerator off because I want to have enough electricity to go through the night. Now one thing I did find y'all, oh I'm going to do this tonight I think. Because, let me take this off so I can sit down right here. Oh yeah, that feels good. Because I'm not going to have my refrigerator, my freezer, my refrigerator plugged up tonight. And I don't have anything in the freezer that needs to stay frozen. All I have in my freezer right now is bottles of frozen water. So when I don't have food that I prep, I put all my bottles of water in the freezer to store them but let them get frozen. So on days when I got good solar coming in, my bottles of water are going to freeze. And then on days when I don't have that much solar coming in, I can take anything that I need to stay cold that's in my refrigerator. I could take it and put it up in my freezer with those bottles of water and it will stay cold. Now, tonight, because I do not have anything in the freezer that needs to stay cold, if I get hot up in here and it doesn't, and the fan is not cooling me off enough and I want it to get a little cooler, I would just open this up with that ice water in there and the fan running and that it's gonna cool the air. I mean, this this is, this feels like an air conditioner. I'll just leave this open all night long with that ice in there. So let me show y'all what I'm talking about. I have several, let me turn on this light so y'all can see. I have several bottles of water, of ice in here, and that's all I have in my freezer. Sometimes when I don't have nothing else cooked and I didn't food prep, I'll just store all my bottles of water up in here, let them get frozen, and then on days like tonight, if it gets too hot up in here, I could just leave this open like this and have my fan running and that's going to cool it off. And then, and then I can also open my vent and I have a pop out window right here in my van. If y'all can get a pop out window in the front of your van or the side so my window is open it's popped up after i turn all my lights off i will keep this down because nobody can see in but then i have air coming in here as well because i got a pop out window so those are the things that i can do to try to stay cool in my van without running my ac i do have that ac over there that i brought with me that I could run when I'm parked somewhere where I have electricity. But because I'm parked in a parking lot and I don't have no electricity, those are the things that I'm doing to stay cool at night because I don't have electricity. Hello, boss lady, Miss Carol's Valley, Candace, mother of twins. And Miss Jamila, how are y'all doing? The van looks nice. The van is junky right now. So anybody have anything, any questions about staying cool in the summertime in a van in Texas? Those are the things that I have to do to stay cool in a van like last year i did get sick in my van um sleeping in my van and having no circulation going i didn't have a fan and i had to get a fan i didn't have a fan and sometimes i didn't have enough solar coming in so i did get sick and one thing, when I get sick, you you guys, one thing I, and thank God for my subscribers. I just want to, let me take this opportunity to thank you. Thank y'all. We were praising and worshiping God on the other channel, Vanessa. 
VIPB just now. Um, but I just want to thank my subscribers because I don't know everything. And over the course of my van life, several of my subscribers have looked out for me, passed on information to me. And like when I had got sick in the van last year, one of my subscribers had sent me this echinacea. And they was like, Vanessa, take the echinacea and take the whole bottle until it's gone. And I'm telling you, that echinacea knocked my sickness out of me. Uh, and they was like, keep this echinacea on hand. And they sent me more bottles of echinacea. I put more on my Amazon wish list. Uh, and when I had got sick, y'all remember when I had got sick, uh, when that person had met me and kissed me on the face? And I got sick and the first time in my van life, I had to go into a hotel. First time in van life, I had got sick and I took that echinacea. I don't know what I had <laughs> and I don't know why I had got sick. What had happened was, but it knocked it out of me like within a day or two, it was gone. So whenever I feel sick or I feel a little sickness coming on for whatever reason, I got my echinacea. I don't take my echinacea every day. This is just to knock out whatever it is you feeling whenever you feel it. So when you feel it coming on, you start taking that echinacea. If it stay around for a while and you take it into the whole bottle, uh, go out. Or you could take it three or four days. If, if like it saw going away at the second day, then take it like three or four days. Uh, and you could take this three to five times a day. That echinacea, baby, it works. Thanks to the subscriber that turned me on to the echinacea. Thanks to the subscriber that turned me on to the black seed oil, which is the same person. And just thank y'all for like looking out for me. Thank you to Miss Mary who sent me this concentrated air freshener. She sent me this like a year ago, y'all. You only really need one spray. I don't know why I just sprayed four sprays. You only really need one spray because this stuff going to make me cough. Because it is so strong <laughs> and concentrated. I didn't need all the pumps. One pump will do you. Thanks. It's a lot of things that uh, people have turned me on to that has uh, made my van life better. And another thing that made my van life better that a company sent me is my portable toilet. Now, I had a good situation with my DIY toilet that I had made. Oh, y'all, hold on. I got a short in this light, and every time I hit that card... It goes out. So hold on. Okay. I had a good situation with my DIY toilet. And, but the company reached out to me and they sent me their toilet. And it has the P diversion and everything on it and it is a game changer like this toilet you guys it is a little on the expensive side but i'm trying to tell you in van life it is worth it like some things you just gonna have to pay for okay because you need those comforts of home and let me clean out this thing right here because i want to show y'all Oh, Let me make sure it's clean. I want to show y'all. It 
It's clean. I just want to make sure it's clean, clean. I just want to make sure it's clean, clean, okay? Y'all, thumbs up the live stream, please. Let's get the live stream to 100 thumbs up. Happy Sunday. At nighttime, my nighttime routine, y'all. At nighttime, I take my toilet. During the day, let me show y'all. During the day, I have my toilet over here. I could put a pillow on it and I could sit on top of it. That's what y'all see me sitting on. That's what y'all see me sitting on. I be sitting on my toilet right here. So my toilet doubles as a seat and oh, it's a toilet girl but i put this cushion on it this is what my cushions are every time i do laundry i wash these cushions i take the whole pillow and everything and put it in the washer and these are some ikea pillow covers and these are just some pillows that i got second hand that i actually just put in this pillow thing that I got from Ikea my colors they come in all different colors they come in black they come in gray uh, I don't know I think they come in brown but they came in my yellow so I have them in black and gray and I take my toilet and I put my toilet over here by the door and at night I could raise my toilet up with my bed still down and I could sit on the toilet. I love this toilet because there is a pee diversion. Your poo is here, your pee is there, and your bag is here with your pine pellets in it. And at nighttime, when I have to use the bathroom, I'm gonna show y'all, cause I got to put my bed up. I got to put my bed up. So let me show y'all. How everything works. If y'all have any questions, let me know. So, at nighttime, when I get ready to go to bed, y'all thumbs up the live stream, please. Can we get it to a hundred thumbs up? I learned about echinacea from you, and I take the tablets. The liquid is better. I don't believe in tablets. Hey, Miss Apple, Miss Apple, say thumbs up the live. Hey, Nigel. Hello. Hello, Miss Carol. Say, I also take elderberry. Yes, a lot of my subscribers take elderberry and zinc. I think I need to start taking zinc, y'all. And I think I need to start back taking my uh, electrolytes. Add my electrolytes to my water. I do feel like I'm a little dehydrated and stuff. Uh... Yes, it definitely works. Hey, Miss Samantha, Miss Jamila, Miss Valley. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. So, everything, this is what I do at night, y'all. This is my nighttime routine. I do this every night because I don't have a fixed bed. My mattress normally goes behind here, but I didn't put my mattress behind my seat today because I was driving from out of town and I like to lean my seat back. So I usually keep my mattress right here when I'm driving long distances, but my mattress is usually right there and my uh, mat is rolled up on top of it. So everything goes there. The curtain goes behind it. So at night, I have to sweep the floor first is what I do every night. I sweep my floor with my little handy dandy broom that I got from, I love this broom better that I got from the 99 cents only store. When you find them in stock, buy you about six of them. 
because they don't keep them in stock all the time. So when you find these, you want to get enough. If one ever breaks, if one ever chips, get about five or six or ten of these bad boys, y'all, and keep them. <laughs> keep them in your storage. Keep them somewhere because I'm telling you, when these things sell out, you're going to be mad at yourself if your uh, other ones, because they don't always get them back in stock. That happened to me, y'all. I had been looking for these brooms because I don't like the ones from, uh, I don't like the ones from Dollar Tree. I like these, y'all. And I don't like the ones that I ordered from other places. So every night, I sweep my floor because I done got in and out of the van all day long. So every night, I sweep my floor. I sweep my floor every night. Pick up the trash. And then I put my match my um uh, then I put my mat down. I've had this down today though because I didn't pick it up. So then I put my mat down. And after I put my mat down, my mattress goes down next. My mattress goes down next. Thumbs up to live. Can we get the live stream to 100 thumbs up, please? We got 142 people in the house. Then, okay. use my And then next, I put my mattress down, and I just take my mattress like that, and I have, this is a twin size mattress, and if you guys want to buy anything, if you guys want to buy anything that I have in my van, I have an Amazon storefront. And you can buy anything that I have in my van. So I have this mattress on my Amazon storefront. I have a queen size sheet on the mattress that I just double over and a queen size sheet. So when you move in van life, you don't have to get rid of your queen size sheet. You can put them on your mattress and just double them over. So I have that. And then... My yellow pillows are for me to sit on, and my black pillow is my pillow to sleep on. I just washed these the other day, but it look, it's looking a little dirty. So that is my pillow to sleep on. When it's not cold, but I still like to cover up with cover, I still have to cover up with some cover when it's not cold. So, I still have to have a blanket. So I take this blanket and I put it down. Uh-oh. Yeah, this thing is just really tripping. Stay on. So I have my blanket down and my pillow and if it's right there, that's how I go to sleep. So, oh, this light, hold on, what is really going on, why is you tripping, so I could sit here, edit videos, or lay down and edit videos, I normally don't sit up, I just lay down, so I could sit here and edit some videos. But look, y'all. But see, now I'm in my bed. I'm asleep. I got my fan on me. Isn't this so comfortable, y'all? Look. I got my fan on me right here. My feet are there. My head is down here. I'm sleepy, my fan on me. When I get ready to use the bathroom at night, look.
My toilet is right here. Voila, that's my setup. My toilet is right here. And all I have to do at nighttime is open that up and turn my butt over there and sit down and use the bathroom. I basically don't even have to get out of bed. Look, I don't have to get out of bed to use the toilet. Look at that. Isn't that neat? And this toilet is from Trilino. This is the smallest one. Miss uh, Charlene ordered the one that's bigger than mine. So hers holds more urine and she have a more of a space. She thought she was ordering this size one, but she ordered the big one. And uh, yeah, she ordered the big one and hers cost $507. I don't know how much this one costs, but I'm going to tell you it is worth it, you guys. I'm going to tell you it's worth it because to have a seat on here that's comfortable, to have your pee diversion, your pee going down there where you can empty your pee, it is worth it. It's worth it, especially in van life. And to have, and it's a soft closed seat, look, it closes on its own. It's going to close. Uh, did I push it down enough? It closes on its own. See that? It closes on its own. It's soft. Soft close. Mm. It closes on its own. And then I just put my pillow... On here when I want to sit down and it instantly turns into a seat nobody has to know it's a toilet right thumbs up the video if y'all have any questions let me know and I'm gonna share the link to my Amazon wish list hey miss May Y'all like my toilet? And I am in my bed. My toilet is right there. My bed is right here. The fan is right there. The refrigerator is right there. If it's cold at night, the stove is right there. I like the stove. And I can keep my stove running all night long. Let me... Share the link to my Amazon storefront. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, but if you do order something off my Amazon storefront, I do get a small commission like two cents three cents four cents and something like that it's not it's not going to change the price of what you're ordering but just because you did shop from my amazon storefront i will get a little small percentage so you help me by shopping the Amazon storefront and if y'all want to interested in this mattress or anything that I have in my van I probably need to order some uh, put some more stuff on that list There you go. And if you guys are not following me on TikTok, please follow me on. Hold on. Please follow me on TikTok.
Facebook and Instagram and YouTube under Vanessa's Van Life Journey. But if you're not following me on TikTok, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on TikTok so I can start going live over there and playing music. So if you are not following me, Follow me over there so we could get to a thousand followers on TikTok. Let me see how many we're at now. I think sometime that thing don't update that. Let's say warning something. Morning. A violation for what? Hold on, y'all. Anyway, I think I got 316 followers. I don't think it updates them often. So I don't know. It say I got 316. So anyway, y'all follow me on TikTok if y'all haven't already. Okay, anybody have any other questions? Anybody have any questions about my nighttime routine? How I stay warm at night? And I like that my bed is right here. 
I have access to my toilet from my bed. I'm in my bed. I have access to my toilet. I have access to my door, my window. I have access to my front seat. If I need to jump up and start my van, I could jump, put my curtain back, jump up and get in my van. I have access to all my stuff in my cabinets and my drawers uh, because all I have to do, I can still open these and close these. This is my pajama thing right here. So I just get my pajamas out that I slept in last night. I just get my pajamas out and close this back up. And just like that. Just like that, girl. I can. I have access to everything from my bed. And I sleep comfortable every night. I sleep comfortable. Uh, sometimes if I don't sleep good, it's just because sometimes I be too cold. And I'd be too lazy to get up and get a blanket, which is my blanket is just usually right there. I'd be too lazy to get up and get a blanket or I'd be too lazy to get up and close that window. So or like if I'm too hot and I don't feel like getting up and turning on that fan, it'd be my fault sometimes when I don't sleep comfortably. So Arizona misses you girl arizona don't miss me arizona don't miss me i don't miss arizona i don't miss nothing if i wanted to be in arizona i would be in arizona okay y'all anybody got any questions what y'all did today what was for dinner i am i'm about to eat me some crackers and I'm gonna have dinner, then then. I'm gonna put on my pajamas after I end the live that I slept in last night. I took off this morning, just throwing my little thing. So I'm gonna put them on tonight for dinner. Dinner tonight is lunch meat from Dollar Tree and crackers from Dollar Tree and a bottle of water. So this is dinner. If I want to, I can also set something on top of my little toilet seat and I can put my pillow right here. Sometimes, when I don't want y'all to see that over there, I'll sit right here and put y'all up here. And I'm going to turn off this big light because it pulls more juice. I don't need all these lights on. So I will sit right here and... This is dinner. Father God, we thank you for this food we're about to receive in Jesus' name. And I don't know if I'm going to eat both packs of these. 
or just one. I can open this up. And I think I ate all my chips. The only thing I have left now are those cheese puffs. Mm. And these crackers that I got from Dollar Tree. They taste pretty good. I still like the crackers that I get from Walmart better though. I think I'm going to food prep tomorrow. Tomorrow I have to go to Tomorrow I have to go to Discount Tires. I think that rattling noise that I hear. is a loose bolt inside of my rim. I think they probably didn't tighten a bolt all the way. And so I think I have a loose bolt. So I have to I have to go to discount tires. Then I'm gonna go to Walmart, shop for some groceries. I got a video to edit tonight. It's going on 10 o'clock, 9.40. I'll probably be in the bed before 12 in the morning. Did I move again? I saw when you were traveling earlier. I don't have time. Huh? Good night, Miss Valley. Have I worked as a camp host? No, I'm not interested in that. Did you go to the rodeo? Yes, I did. Video is on the channel. Why do y'all delete comments? Don't delete your comments. If you make a, a mistake, I can still understand it. What was I saying, y'all? I don't like air blowing directly on me. I really don't like fans, but I need that circulation in the van, so.
was I saying, y'all? Oh. I'm going to go to Walmart tomorrow. I think I'm probably going to food prep tomorrow. Tomorrow you are going to Walmart and just come to us. Yeah. I think I'm going to food prep tomorrow. So y'all right here from my bed, I have access to everything. My toilet. My window, my door, my front seat, my fan, my refrigerator, my stove. I have access to everything. Yeah, I need to get some real food because this lunch meat and crackers. I'm not used to eating this kind of stuff. This ain't my cup of tea. We got to get some real food. It was overcast today. That's why we don't have that much solar. That's why I got to keep them water bottles in that freezer when I don't have that much stuff up in there. So when it's overcast, I can still keep stuff cool in my freezer rater. And like I say, it would double as an air condition. Double is air condition. I don't think I have any more snacks. I think I ate all my candy. Only thing I have left is corn nuts and crackers. I think at the 99 cent store, I've, I don't think I've ever seen the seaweed the Dollar Tree my seaweed but next time I go to the 99 cents only store I need to see if they have some seaweed Y'all have any questions about my nighttime, my nighttime routine? Staying cool in the summer and staying warm in the winter? This is my bed. This is my nighttime routine. Put my mattress down. Sweep the floor. Put my mattress down. Move my toilet. Throw my pillow over here. Put my pajamas on. And then go 
go to bed. And if I feel like that fan is too much, I can move it off of me, which I usually do. Because I don't necessarily like stuff blowing on me. And I can also turn it down. I like these little uh, things that I had got from Marshalls. They're kind of spandexy. They're better than the other shirts, but I still like the thick, the thick sleeve ones that I want. Any y'all got any questions? Oh, I forgot. Girl, I forgot I had another. I thought I was through eating. No wonder I'm still hungry. No wonder I'm still hungry. I thought I ate both packages. Hey, Vanessa, have you ever had problems with little critters in your van? Which ones? Which critters? I do things to avoid critters. In your home, do you? Mice. Because I am scared of them. <laughs> mm, I know some people got mice in their house and they call orchid. <laughs> I don't call orchid. <laughs> crazy y'all i do not have mice in my van if i've ever had a mice in my van i don't know if i knew about it because i do things to avoid certain situations like, I have rat poison in my van, thrown from the front to the back. Them little things, I bought the whole pack. And I have them in my van. I have the roach motels in my van. I will fog my van once or twice a year, put the foggers in here. And I feel like most van lifers have problems with rodents. Because they store food in their van. I keep everything in glass jars in mason jars. I use this for everything. Flour, sugar. Rodents are going to be attracted to your van if they can smell food. If you keep everything in those jars, they not going to smell nothing. So I keep everything in those jars. My nuts, my... When I used to cook all that other food, grits, oatmeal, I kept everything in them jars. Now I don't cook all that stuff because I'm supposed to be doing the carnivore diet. But all my foods are canned. My foods are in jars, my nuts, my bacon grease, everything is in jars. Even, you know, cause rats and stuff like the rummage do anything, paper, anything. I keep everything in jars. The only thing that's not in jars is my water. 
and I'm keeping that in the freezer. So I keep everything else in the refrigerator and the freezer. I have rat poison under my seat, just thrown behind stuff. I got the roach motels. So, I mean, I don't have an issue with rats, roaches, ants. The only thing I have a problem with, and that's when I'm parked somewhere in the summertime, you're going to have more of a problem with flies. And that's when I have my little screens up. But, and then I got fly swatters for that. The only thing I really have problems with is flies and mosquitoes. Roaches. Rats. Ants. No. If I seen any of those things, then I'm going to get some more rat, rat poison. If I seen some roaches, I'm going to fog. I already got roach motels. Just And some people say, well, you shouldn't get the rat poison because it's going to attract rats. You have rat poison in your house. Is it attracting rats? No, the rats are already there. And if the rat poison do attract rats, then guess what? I'd rather for the rat to come up in my van to eat the poison than to come up in here for any other reason. A rat gonna find somewhere to crawl anyway. So if he coming up in here, I'd rather for him to go directly to the rat poison than somewhere else like you have to take precautionary measures for the things that you think you're scared of or you fear. You don't wait till you see a rat to get rat. You don't wait till you see a rat to get rat poison. You get the rat poison first. <laughs> I mean, that's just my thoughts. That's just my thoughts. I'm gonna get some rat poison first. I ain't seen no rats and I don't wanna see no rats. That's why I'm gonna get the rat poison. Oh, I thought I had ate my bag of chips. I had finished that other bag, so I got a whole nother bag of chips, y'all. Yay! Did that answer your question, my darling? Um, hey, mice, because I am scared of them. I like those tank tops, too. Miss Veronica say one time I had one in my house and my husband and son caught it because I am going to a hotel. Girl, you you gonna move out your house because of a rat? Baby, just get a rat and eviction, eviction notice. Put some poison out. Okay, you are smart. Peppermint oil helps with that. Veronica say because since that happened, my husband keep poison around the outside. You could put the rat poison up in your attic, put it in your cabinets, in the back. You just you get the kind in a little plastic and you just throw it somewhere. You throw it somewhere. If they in there, they're gonna find it, and then you're not gonna have any more problems. Uh, the poison is embalming fluid. Some people don't want to put poison out because they say they don't want the rats to smell. But when the rats eat the stuff, it's embalming fluid, and they not gonna you're not gonna smell them rats, girl. And them rats gonna go somewhere and die. You can also make your own rat poison, and when they eat it, they're gonna go outside and they're gonna die. So. Like, they're going to run outside. I have a serious fear. My sister and brothers are all afraid. Child, how you going to be scared of something that's under your feet? When it sees you, it runs. <laughs> <laughs> when it sees you, it runs. You need to be scared of something that don't run. 
don't be scared of nothing when you turn the lights on or when you come in the room and run. Like, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> a rat ain't nothing to be scared of. Because when you run, when you show up, the rat leave. Okay? You need to be scared of stuff that's going to stay when you when they, when they see you. Okay? A rat run when you see it. A roach run when you show up. Why is you scared of either one of them, a rat or a roach? I'm not scared of nothing. Girl, if I see a roach, I'm doing this. If I see a mosquito, I'm doing that. I'm hitting it with my hand and, and go wash my hands, child. I ain't got time to be scared of nothing, and I ain't got time to go get nothing to hit it with because I don't want it to be gone when I come back. Okay, let me see something up in my van that I could kill right now. I'm not about to say, well, let me find something. I'm about to hit it. Because when I come back, I don't want it to be done crawled somewhere and then I can't find it. No, I'm going to kill it right now. Only thing I ain't going to hit with my hand is a scorpion. I run too. <laughs> <laughs> they running, you running. One of you, but you're going to hurt yourself running from him, but he ran from you. Don't do that, girl. Stop. <laughs> they are some gifty cornbread. Uh, they some Jifty Cornbread Baking Soda. They can pass gas and die. Yeah, but the baking soda mix, mm-hmm. I am not scared of man, but rodents, I can't. Girl, get over that fear. That stuff is under your feet. That stuff is running from you. They scared of you. Turn the light on and they gone. If you put the rat poison out, you ain't got to worry about it. Keep the rat poison out year around. Don't wait till you see rats. You know they exist. If you keep everything in jars, even in home life, keep everything in jars. Don't put nothing in plastic, not the plastic containers, buy the jar containers. You know what I used to do in home life? I don't know if y'all have a Trader Joe's. But Trader Joe's had them big jar of pickles for like two dollars and ninety nine cents. They probably three dollars and ninety nine cents now, or they probably five dollars and ninety nine cents because inflation is up. But they had a big jars of pickles for three ninety nine. They had them for two ninety nine or three ninety nine a couple of years ago. I would buy them big jars of pickles. I didn't even eat the pickles. I bought them big jars of pickles. And I would give them to all the kids in the neighborhood as soon as I bought them. Y'all come get some pickles because I wanted the jar empty right away. Then I go in the house, clean out the jar, soak the jar, do all that, and put my oatmeal up in the jars, my sugar up in the jars. I had everything up in the jars, my cereals up in the jars. I would buy a jar of pickles or two jars of pickles every month, give them out to the kids in the neighborhood, big old jars. and had, I had everything in there, flour, everything in my jars. Now the rats going to everybody else's house. They ain't coming to mine no more. And I kept my poison out. They ain't coming to my house. Because I kept everything, the rats and the roaches and, and even uh, those weavers don't get in your food and all of that because you got everything in jars. Everything in jars. I keep everything in jars. Cereal, flour, Everything. I can't, no matter what I would, risk hurting myself, me and my siblings. We have husbands and wives that are not scared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miss Classic, Miss Classic, say I have a jar in the refrigerator. Now, thanks for the information. Uh, Miss Tanisha say, hello, everybody. Hi, girl. How you doing? So tonight I was sharing with everybody my nighttime routine, uh, how I set my bed up, how I stay cool in the summertime when it's hot, how I stay warm in the wintertime when it is cold. And how I get up and use the bathroom at night because my toilet is at my feet. And how I stay comfortable in my bed. And I'm sitting in my bed right now talking to y'all. 
I could just lay down, girl. I could just lay down. I shared my Amazon. Uh, I'm just showing y'all how comfortable I am. I share my Amazon storefront with y'all. If y'all see anything in my van and you want to go order for yourself off of my storefront. But I have everything in arm's reach. My fan is over there blowing on me. And I could turn it up higher. I got it on the lowest speed right now. And if I'm hot at night, then I'll just open up my vents, turn my fan on, and pop my window out over there. And then I got an airflow. And sometimes I can even have my windows down in the front. I got my windows down a little bit, like a little bitty crack. Uh, and no matter how high it is, I still have to sleep with the blanket on. So I got on a blanket. And uh, y'all have any questions? Are you ever going back to your other home? When I'm ready, girl, I'm probably only going to be at my reg my other home two times out the year. Two months out of the year. Two to three to four months out of the year. I don't plan on being there. You know, I'm traveling, girl. I ain't trying to be stuck in no one place, girl. Only when I'm ready to go sit down. In the summertime, when it get too, 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 too hot. When it get too, 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 too hot and I don't have a state that I want to go to to do van life, then that's just an option for, you know, I don't have to never go back there. Just pay my rent, keep a trailer there, and... When I'm ready, I can go back. But I don't have no time frame. Y'all keep asking me that same question. And my answer is going to keep being the same. I don't know when. I don't know when I go back. I'm going recoup for a couple of weeks. And then I'm getting back on the road. Hey there, Miss uh, Laney. I hope you are having a good night. Yes, we're just talking about van life. I just can't get over that fear. I almost had a heart attack trying to get over that fear. So I avoid rodents at all costs. <laughs> Girl, you're still talking about the rodents. <laughs> po, po baby. Well, I'm not scared of nothing. And uh, I take precautionary measures. So, you know, I don't have no issues. I don't keep food where they can. I keep everything in jars. And uh, I empty my trash. I think when you do van life, you have more chores in van life, like daily chores. You empty your trash daily. You picking up your bed. If you, like me, I'm picking up my bed daily. So I don't have no fixed bed. I think once you're picking up stuff too, it's less stuff for stuff to hide behind because you're picking it up every day. Like when you got a fixed bed, something can crawl up in that bed and you won't even find it till you go to sleep. Girl, no. I pick up my bed every day. I sweep my floors every day. I'm throwing away my trash every day. I'm emptying my pee jug and my other poop bag every day or every other day, however often it needs to be emptied. So you're doing more repetitious stuff in your van every day. So... And then another thing, like, y'all have a greater chance to have rats in your house than we do in a van because our van is moving every day. When you live in a van, you have less of a chance for rats 
to come and get up in here and roaches to come get up in here and ants to come and get up in here because we're moving every day. Even if it's a rat up in here and we start moving around and he's shaking on the road, girl, that rat is not going to stay up in here. He's trying to be somewhere where he could sleep in peace. Even though I know this lady on YouTube, she caught, she catches rats. She had rats in her, I don't know if it was her car or her house. And girl, she got the pet rats now, poor child. Y'all thumbs up the live stream, please. Can we get the live stream to 100 thumbs up? Y'all got any questions about my van life, girl? Hey, Miss Phyllis. Phil Phyllis. Thank you for answering my question. You welcome, child. Come and visit us in Michigan when it's too hot there you can park in my yard girl i don't want to park in nobody's yard <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, girl i'm scared of these people on youtube <laughs> lol when i was young and in my first apartment we had an infestation because of construction in another apartment needless to say i humbly asked to move back home oh <laughs> with your mama <laughs> hold on hold on uh, you you Humbly ask to move back home. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Because of rats. <laughs> oh, oh. Girl, you got to be out of your mind. I am not moving back. Girl, I will kill them rats, roaches. And, mm -mm. I am not scared. I know that's right. <laughs> you laughing like my mama did? I didn't care. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Y'all want to see my <laughs> face? <laughs> oh, 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 she say. <laughs> Y'all, she say. I humbly asked to move back home. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, girl, you let the rats, you, you let the rats run you out of a house and a home? Oh, no. I was 18. I was traumatized. <laughs> Girl, I was traumatized. Child, I couldn't have asked to move back home to get rid of no rats because, girl, we had... Now, let me tell y'all something. Y'all talking about y'all running from rats? How big is y'all rats? How big is the rat y'all running from? Like this... Y'all y'all talking about rats this size? The rats about this size, y'all. That is not no rat. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. I grew up in the hood. Our rats was the size of cats. <laughs> y'all talking about y'all running from y'all running from y'all running from this baby. If you would have seen the rats in our neighborhood. They was the size of cats baby. You be thinking that was a cat in your yard and it was a rat okay 
And that's why I'm telling y'all, what is you running from? You running from something this size that's going to run from you when you see it? Girl, the rats in our neighborhoods, they didn't run because they was big as cats, baby. They they wasn't running from you. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, Miss Veronica say mice and rats. Could you afford this van life with... Uh, first of all, why are you coming? Did you come in here and say hello? Hi, how are you doing? Why would you want to know what I could afford? <sighs> Could I afford this van life without my YouTube channel? Uh, my YouTube channel, my YouTube check is my only income. So uh, I don't know why you're asking me that question. We're talking about lighthearted things. Uh, Miss Miss say, nah, this was in the 80s when they had those super rats out. Super rats. That's their home for now. I am gone. What's What's gone? That's who's home for now. Okay, who, what, what's going on? That's their home for now. I am gone. Uh, I had a mouse jump out of the trash can and jump in, jumped on me and ran around my body like a squirrel. I ran around a tree trunk. Worst experience. Oh my goodness, Tracy. We grew up in the hood, but we never lived with them. They lived with y'all. Yes, the size of cats, but rats don't run. Rats don't run. <laughs> because I am interested in... Well, don't compare your van life to my van life. Ask yourself, can you afford it? Without a YouTube check. Do you do YouTube? Well, then you can't afford it. It's not about my budget. It's about your budget. If you're interested in van life, then you need to consider your budget, not mine. Uh, raccoons be in the backyard in my trash can. Girl. There are all kind of critters. What was really funny was when you said someone broke their leg running from a rat, a roach. I must have <laughs> laughed so hard. I think it was who? Yeah, she, she did. Her daughter broke her leg running from a roach. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about her whole leg. Girl, she was set up for months. I think she had to have surgery and everything, child. You missed one of my comments. It might not have showed up. It might not have showed up. I read all the comments. One person will ruin it for the rest of us. Now we all some overly obsessed YouTube fans. What is you talking about? Overly obsessed YouTube fans? What what that mean? Oh, you talking about uh going stay in the lady's yard? Yeah, girl. Mm -mm. Ty, I've been traumatized. Y'all want to talk about wait a minute. Y'all want to talk about being traumatized by rats? I've been traumatized by these cats on YouTube. Uh. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, sc I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Y'all want to know who I'm scared of? Y'all want to know what I'm scared of? I'm scared of these old ladies on YouTube. Girl. Girl. I am running. Girl. I will run from a girl. I will, leave, I will move in with a rat. <laughs> Move in with a rat. These little old ladies on YouTube. Oh hell no! <laughs> oh, 
I'm running for these little ladies on YouTube, y'all. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Girl, you know how you see a little old lady and be trying to help her cross the street? Shh. I ain't helping nobody. <laughs> I ain't helping nobody. She ain't gonna pick up her cane and knock me over the side of the head. <laughs> Girl, you trying to help these? <laughs> I guess if they was a young fool, they gonna be an old fool too, huh? So you can't change. Girl, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Oh, no. Not a rat. I will live with the rat. Mm -mm. You could take the old lady. <laughs> you get an old lady. You get an old lady. Not me, girl. I'll take the rat any day. At least you know you got a rat. 70s and 80 yet. Oh. Causing a stir, girl. These 70 and 80 year old ladies. And then the thing about it is... They ain't even just 70 and 80. Okay, listen. See, the story ain't just the age. Okay, you just say 70 and 80 year old old, old lady. Now, girl, 70 and 80 year old ladies that's crippled. <sighs> girl. It, okay, let me sit. Let me imagine. Let me let y'all imagine this. 70 year old lady. Sitting up, cripple, cigarettes, <laughs> puffing on cigarettes, pack, two packs a day, <laughs> vodka, and popping pills too. Girl! Girl, no wonder these people don't like me, because I ain't did none of that in my life. Cigarettes, <laughs> I don't do that. Popping pills, I don't do that. Vodka, girl, I couldn't drink a tablespoon of vodka a day. That would get me drunk, okay? And up here, cursing and calling people. What old lady you know that she just addressed? Like these young girls address their friends, be this and be that. What old lady you know call everybody a B and an H, including her daughter and her grandchild? What old lady you know pulling a pistol out on her granddaughter and slapping her? Girl, eyes be running from people this ignorant like that. I grew up in the hood, but golly, that is some vulgar stuff. They do the most. Them need Jesus. Them. <laughs> this classic say, them need Jesus. Old ladies with dementia, remember? Girl. They can't have dementia too bad. Girl, they ain't got no dementia. Them people was, I would just say this. When a old lady is stupid, in her old age, she was stupid when she was young. Like, ain't nobody waiting till they get 80 and 90 years old to get stupid. Girl, you been stupid all your life. You've been stupid all your life. Don't even try it. Act like they cursing some people out. Child, you curse everybody out. It must be the early stages. Girl, ain't nobody got no dementia. They got the d d d dementia. Just mention the devil and they got it. <laughs> d mention. Devil mention. They d mention. What? Wow, they worse than the folks in the hood. But they are demented. Mm-hmm. And somebody, some people want to y'all talking about they worse than the folks in the hood. Girl, they grew up in the hood. That's why they like they are. 
Well, since the virus, a lot of people are more mentally ill than ever, as well as disconnected from families. Child, people want to talk about me living in a van by myself and, and not being around nobody and not having nothing to do with nobody, but I ain't bothering nobody. But, you know, I'm the only one I got to put up with. But when you... This is my whole thing, y'all. When you need somebody else, say, for instance, you are crippled or you are sickly and you need somebody else. And God sends somebody in your path to help you, whether it be your family members, whether it be a stranger, whether it be a nurse or a caregiver, and you cursing them people out while they are helping you, you deserve to lay flat on your back. Just like that. Because if you could be in pain and you could be sick and you could be cursing people like this helping you, you don't deserve to have no help. I won't be the one, whether I'm doing it as a friend or I am getting paid to do it, you is not going to be cursing me out. And that's on period. And I don't care who you is. You is not going to be cursing me out. But some of these old people, they are very unhappy. Like a sickly person and an old person, you should be grateful that somebody is coming to take care of you and help you and not mistreat you. Because some people will mistreat, especially like in nursing homes and stuff, they will mistreat them old people. So then you're going to get a nerd to be old and honorary and cursing people out on top of girls. Somebody will hurt. Mm -mm. That's just so ungrateful. I couldn't. The God in me. Child, I can't get old and be cussing and fussing and being rowdy and, 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 and bragging about it. And curse, you got your daughter and your granddaughter living with you and you curse them people out and you mistreat them, girl. And you need them. How you gonna need somebody and be cursing them out? That's ignorant. That's just totally ignorant. Our hood looked out for each other. Yep. I'd be out in a flash. But some older people are suffering a lot. Some people's Girl, let me tell you this. This is what I learned from a particular situation. I was ready to go and help somebody because of my heart and because they were elderly and because they needed help. But what I realized in the situation is the reason why they in that situation is because they've been evil their whole life. So sometimes you can look at people and feel sorry for them because you don't know why they in that situation. Now that I went through the situation with the individual, I realized the reason why they suffering and they in pain. It's because they been evil their whole life. And they still cutting up and fussing and, 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 and not grateful for what God, girl. Shh. Some people got uh, one foot on a banana peel and the other one in the grave. Y'all thumbs up the live stream. Hey that Jackie. I got a friend going through that with her mother. Very stressful. And sometimes them old people is going through suffering because of what they done been, did in their life. Some people is suffering because, you know, and let me tell you something, another thing. Sometimes when people lived a very ratchet life, they live longer to suffer 
longer because God be trying to lead them to repentance and let them live longer. But the reason why they live in pain, suffering longer, because they stubborn and they too stupid to repent. God be giving, letting the people live longer to try to repent so they could go to heaven, but they still don't, girl. Po baby. Po baby. Yeah, I can't always judge that stuff. Suffering is no excuse for being abusive. It would be different if they have Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm-hmm. They being abusive to people because they've been mean their whole life. Been there, done that. Sister had early onset dementia. It was very challenging. She became a different person. Miss Veronica say true. Miss Jackie say so true. People be hateful when they are young and then be pitiful when they get old. But sometimes people suffer. You know, and this is why I'm going to say, that's why I'm not dealing with no evil people. And I ain't take abuse off my daddy. I ain't taking it off of nobody. My daddy was paralyzed. He was paralyzed since I was 12 years old. But the man was evil. He was evil his whole life. The reason why he ended up paralyzed was because he was evil. So people wanted to say, well, you know, your daddy like that because he paralyzed and he can't do nothing for himself. Girl, you didn't know my daddy when that man was walking. You didn't know my daddy when he was walking. How can you tell me he just like that? Because, girl, go sit down and go shit up. Because if you would have knew him when he was walking, you would know why he's paralyzed. Hello? And then after he get paralyzed, he don't take that as a warning sign from God and say, okay, well, now I can't walk no more. Well, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to shit up. And I'm not going to be the same violent, vulgar person that I was. Now, these people get sick, get disabled, and, and still decide to be violent and more vulgar than they were before. Instead of learning and saying, you know what? Being, being paralyzed, being violent and vulgar is what led me to being paralyzed. So maybe I need to change. Maybe I need the Lord. Maybe I need to get saved. Maybe I need to repent. Maybe I need to try to grow up and be a Christian and be the man that God called me. I could still be a paralyzed man that God called me to be. No. So now you're just going to continue to be the way you were. Like you paralyzed. You can't do nothing for yourself and you still cursing people out that's coming to do for you. You can't walk. You can't get up. You can't do nothing for yourself. But you're going to still curse other people out that's coming to bring you something to eat, that's coming to empty your pee bucket. Girl, I can't do it. If you're going to be ungrateful, you cursing out the caregivers. You cursing out the doctors. Mm-mm-mm. Po, po people. Po people. But you got to pray for them, y'all. You got to pray for them, but you don't have to tolerate it. A lot of people fight to stay strong. So when they become ill, they are still fighting to get out of it. Many possibilities. I don't think it's no excuse to mistreat people. Especially if you have all your faculties... You, there's no excuse to mistreat people. You could be in pain and you could still be grateful that people are there. You could still say thank you. You could still be nice. You could still be kind. You don't have to use vulgar language just because you're disabled, just because you can't walk, just because you're in pain, just because you're hurting. You do not have to curse people out. You do not have to use people and you do not have to abuse them and you do not have to take them for granted. That's just my thoughts. When I get old, 
I'm still going to be grateful. I appreciate people. Now, I think whatever you are, you are going to be. If you are respectful at a young age, you're going to be respectful when you get old. I think whatever you are, it just heightens it. It just, it, it's going to get worse. If you was evil when you was young, then I guess you're going to be more evil when you get old. But if you was a nice person when you were young, you're not going to turn around and be a nice person. If you always use the language B and H and this and that and curse people out, then you're going to still be cursing people out as an old person. Ain't nobody going to sit up here and be using the language B's and H's as no old 70 and 80 year old woman if that ain't how she talked when she was young. Nah, tell me I'm lying. Technically, yes. I see that right now with my brother-in-law. I like the late night third shift lives. Technically, yes, sometimes they need a lot of unconditional love to change. Well, Grizzly, you give it to them. God damn it. <laughs> Stop taking up and making excuses for people. Unconditional love. God then gave them people unconditional love their whole life. And uh, they in their 70s and 80s and about to die. And unconditional love ain't changed them by now. Then guess what? They going to die and go to hell needing unconditional love. Because don't nobody owe nobody nothing. And ain't nobody got to take nothing off of nobody mistreating them. And you trying to help them. Nah. And you want to sit up here and be misused and abused by somebody, then do it. I ain't the one. <laughs> oh, I ain't the one. This is true. I have an elderly neighbor, 84, and I help her, and she is so sweet. We share the same birthday. I like the idea of van life like the artwork too thank you i do i say what i see so there well you see it and you do it like if god give you that if god say don't pack cash your pearls force wine and if you knew the person when they was young and up and about, and you knew they were like that when they were young, then you can't make excuses for them being like that because they're older or they're sick. I could see if you knew that person when they were young and before they got sick and they wouldn't like that. But if they was like that before they got sick, child, stop making excuses for them people. Even God has conditions on his love. I used to tell my sister that God is not pleased and she would stop. And I think for one second, then forget she taught about it. Then don't be, I don't care. What you talking about you don't care about, Grizzly? Mm-hmm. Uh, Vanessa, you should be an interior designer. Thank you, girl. I am not making excuses, offering alternatives. But you can't tell other people what to accept and not to accept. If God has given you the patience to deal with certain things and certain people, kudos to you. But everybody got their own things that they are going to accept in their life and not. I'm not going to accept nobody mistreating me and calling me out my name. And that's on period. You can do whatever you want. That's what I am saying. Yes, I am. And you too. If you got the patience and the peace to deal with other people then God might have put you in their life for a reason. What's new updates in your van are you planning? Updates in my van? 
Girl, we is not doing nothing else in this van. This van is... <sighs> this van is built out. It's finished. We are praying and seeking God for the next van. Y'all, thumbs up the live stream. Can we get four, six more thumbs up, please? I know some people with some patience. Grizzly, girl. My friend in Houston, she got more patience than anybody I ever met in life. God gives everybody what they need. Let me put these bubbles on. Y'all, let me turn my light off so I can save. Let me put the bubbles on. I'm going to turn the light off. I can still see y'all comments. Because, hold on. Where are my glasses at? I want to run my fan all night long. And I don't want to. What did I do with my glasses? Oh, there they go. I want to make sure I put my glasses up, y'all. Hold up. Let me turn my light off. And I like to... I like to know where my keys are at, y'all. At night. And my glasses. I like to keep my keys and my glasses handy. And any protection that you might need to protect yourself, you want to keep that handy as well. Know your surroundings. Uh, I'm looking outside my window right now. Looking at my surroundings. Uh, there's some cars in the front of me. Okay, so I got my bubbles on. Y'all can look at the bubbles. I can still see y'all comments. So I'm still reading y'all comments, y'all. Hold on, let me... That's beautiful. What's beautiful? That's pretty, yeah. Um, I like the bubbles, LOL. When you finish your new van, will you sell treasure? I'll probably sell treasure before. Like when I get my van, my new van. I don't know when I'm going to get another van, y'all, but we're just talking about when and if. I would like to get another van before the year is out, but I might not be able to do that because I do want to pay cash for something, and I would like to go to the auction and get a van, so that would mean I would have to have the cash. Uh, That's why I'm working and grinding and going live and all this stuff because, girl, I need the money. <laughs> But uh, when I first get my van, I'm not going to do a van bill. I'm going to, like, furnish my van with, uh, like, regular furniture. I'm going to show y'all how to furnish a van and do a van bill, a no-bill van bill. I'm going to do a no-bill van bill. And then work on it as I go, putting my solar and all this stuff in first. But, like, if I do sell treasure, that will be able to help me get money to put my solar in and all that stuff. And because I have a YouTube channel, I can uh, also get stuff that I need from companies like solar panels and uh, batteries and just whatever I can get from companies. I'm going to be trying to get it, child. Doing reviews and all this stuff. Check out the gas 
government auction. GAS government auction. Uh, waiting for the hot tub to heat back up, though. Yeah, we had snow. Must be nice to be in the area that you need a fan on now. I'm in Texas, girl. Michigan had the nerves to only be 22, girl, 22 degrees and 32 degrees now. Ooh, do y'all have snow down there? Oh my goodness, girl, I would. Mm -mm. Y'all got snow. Y'all got snow. <laughs> yeah, in my area, we had snow, hail, and rain in 24. Oh, Lord. And you want me to come down there? Is you crazy? <laughs> I ain't trying to go nowhere where they got no extreme cold weather, girl. 30. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. Yes, but it melted. Oh, no, I don't care. Mm -mm. Y'all can have that. I ain't coming to Michigan. No, thank you. <laughs> you better you better bring your butt to Texas. <laughs> Anybody in Texas? Let me know. You better bring your butt to Texas. In the summer, not now. The weather is too unpredictable. When do y'all summers come? I love snow and cold. Y'all, anyway, I was saying some people got patience. Everybody got different traits. And God gives different people different strengths for different reasons. Uh, when I tell some of y'all, I can't do this and I can't do that and I ain't taking this and I ain't taking that off nobody. But if you have the strength and that's your gift, then that's your gift. That ain't my gift. My friend in Houston has a gift. She's a very strong woman, and she has patience like I ain't never seen nobody with a day in my life. That woman put up with my daddy as a friend, and I know anybody that deal with him had to have some patience. And I would tell her that I don't know how you deal with that man. Woof, child. She had patience. She have, she still got patience. So, God put some people in some people's life for a reason. But sometimes, even those people do not make a difference to that person. Because that person have to want to change for themselves. And... Don't wear yourself out and yourself down thinking that your love and your patience is going to change somebody else. When you get to the point where you have taken all that you could take, don't stress yourself out. Don't give yourself no heart attack trying to save somebody else y'all I mean sometimes it's like this and I hate to say this but this is what you got to acknowledge one day okay you in the water drowning and a person in the water drowning it's only one life jacket It's only one life jacket. Unfortunately, only one person could be saved. 
That's just the statistics. Your only one person could be say, you can't, don't try to do the hero thing. You can't say, well, I'm going to put on my life jacket and then I'm going to go back. Nope. That ain't the options. The options to the scenario is you in the water drowning and the other person is in the water drowning. It's only one life jacket. You can't be a hero. That ain't the options. The options ain't you could put the life jacket on and you could save him. You can only save one person. And sometimes that's what y'all need to realize. It's either swim, sink, or float. You can only save one person sometimes. Sometimes we be trying and trying and trying to save everybody else and we end up losing our own self in the process. At some point in your life, you need to realize you might just need to fight to save yourself. It be like that, really. Uh, oh, yeah, I understand. True. Sometimes God allows us to go through something to test our resolve. Sound like Miss Charlene today. What a sweet heart. What sound like Miss Charlene? In the Atlanta, we have three seasons in one week. Girl, we got all four seasons in one day. What you talking about? <laughs> Summer comes in June. I'll be in Texas for the for the Caribbean camp weekend. What is that? What sound like Miss Charlene? Do y'all agree with sometimes you need to try to say yourself peace? Patience, Miss Charlene. Uh, I guess Miss Charlene have patience. I think all my friends have patience. It take a lot of patience to deal with me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Miss Charlene have a lot of patience. She do. I ain't the one, y'all. I am not asking God. You know they say when you ask God for patience, you get more trials and tribulations. Mm -mm. I don't want no more patience. <laughs> you know that's what they say when you ask God for more patience. You get more trials and tribulations. I don't want no more patience. Never mind. <laughs> Sure what, Grizzly? You need to uh make complete statements. I don't be knowing what you're talking about. Sure what? <laughs> I really needed to edit a video tonight, but I'm not going to do it tonight. I'll just... Usually I wake up around 4 o'clock. Well... Me neither. I am done. You had enough. You had enough of what? <laughs> you had enough of what? Having patience? <laughs> what is you talking about, Grizzly? Grizzly had enough of what? Trials. <laughs> you don't want no more patience? You want me to pray that you get some more patience? Child. Mm -mm. To the people that got patience, more power to them. To the people that need somebody that have patience, I hope you run into somebody with some patience. 
I can't promise you. I'm going to give you. I got understanding. And I take a little bit off of people. But I'm just talking about just stuff that don't make. Okay, grizzly. This the stuff. Yeah, ladies, y'all tell me this. I don't have patience for the stuff that don't make sense. Like, I have patience with a disabled person and special needs people and elderly people and babies and children, stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. See, y'all got to understand it's a difference. I'm talking about stuff that don't make sense. I do not have patience for foolishness. I do not have patience for nobody cursing people out and calling them out their names when you could use discretion in English without cursing and using profanity. I don't have patience for somebody that would throw something at you instead of hand it to you. I don't have patience for stupid stuff. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about compassion and love and respect and, and you know, patience and stuff like that. I'm talking about stupid stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Grizzly say, you have no idea, seriously. Uh, I have some, maybe a lot. But no, I am done. Well, only you could determine that. Nobody else can tell you how much to take, how much to bear, and how much to put up with. Only you could determine that. And that's what I'm trying to Nobody can tell you how much to take, how much to put up with. What's with the bubbles? The bubbles are there to keep you company because I turned the light off. <laughs> I gave y'all something to look at because I turned the light off so I could conserve my solar to run my fan all night. But, like, nobody could tell you, like, what to put up with, and you can't tell other people. Like, I got friends, like I say, they got patience, baby. Hoo child. They got more patience than I would have in some situations. I can't tell them, you shouldn't put up with this, and you shouldn't put up with that, and you, mm-mm. Because -mm. God gave them patience. Maybe the person that they dealing with, need somebody with that kind of patience. So, mm -mm, but I, I, I ain't the one. Because I don't have patience for, for stupid stuff. Like, mm -mm, it's just a lot of stuff. I just, mm -mm, I'm not built for that. <laughs> I'm not built for that. Stuff that don't make sense disrespect and just stuff that don't make sense but i think i do have a lot of patience in some areas concerning some stuff and concerning some people like i say with babies and special needs people and elderly people i got a lot of patience But stuff that don't make sense, I ain't got no patience for that. I ain't got no patience for stuff that don't make sense. Mm -mm. I ain't tolerating it. You know, okay. Nah, I hope I don't offend nobody. I had a friend. 
that was obesely overweight. And that person would just, even though they couldn't even put on their own shoes and they couldn't do nothing for themselves, they would still sit there and just eat, 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 eat. And then they would cry and say, well, you don't understand how it feels to be this big. And I would be like, but you still you you crying about being that big. You're crying about not being able to put your own shoes on. But at the same time, while you trying to put your shoes on, you still stuff in your face. At some point, you have to make stuff make sense. And you can't expect people to want to help you put your shoes on for the rest of your life. When they see you stuff in your face. You got to try to decide to do something to change your situation. And some stuff just don't make sense. So, I got a lot of patience, but I don't have patience with stuff that don't make sense. Well, you say but a lot, Grizzly. It take work. Yes, it does take work. But it's going to take work on the part of the person that needs to put in the work. The person that that lifestyle is not affecting. You can't keep expecting those people to put their lives on hold if you are not willing to put in the work. You can't expect somebody to help you. And this is just an analogy. You can't expect somebody to help you put your shoes on for the rest of your life and you in your 30s and your 40s. And instead of trying to put your shoes on or say, I'm going to do something so I can change, put my shoes on, you got food in one hand and a shoe in another one. And you just throw the shoe down and give up on putting on the shoe and just keep eating. You got to make a choice. And you can't expect people to just understand, oh, well, you're just never going to be able to put on your shoe. It's like marrying somebody. And the reason why I could say this is because I was married to to somebody disabled. It's like marrying somebody that's disabled they've accepted their disability but their disability is also something that could they could work on like just because some men I done seen some people paralyzed and they still get themselves up out that chair they still take a shower they still do everything they didn't say just because I'm paralyzed I can't do this and I can't do that Some with mental illness literally can't make that choice. Gluttony is a sin too. Uh, I think people just need to repent. I agree. However, not only was your friend addicted to food, she was also had a mental challenge. She needed psychologists. It wasn't a she, it was a he. Nobody sees it that way anymore, which is sad. Everything now is a disease, which is dumb. Yes, food is an addiction. It is a mental illness as well. 
Well, mm. I don't know. I think anything can be overcome if you want to overcome it. I don't think you have to consider everything a mental illness. I think if you want to overcome something bad enough, you have to want it. You have to want it. Maybe depression has something to do with it, but you still got to want it. You got to want it. Because if you say everything is a mental illness, then people are prescribing medicine for mental illnesses. And hold on, y'all. This phone is not charging again. Let me see. Is this thing plugged up? Hold on, let me see why this thing ain't charging. Uh. If you say everything is a mental illness and people just prescribing drugs for it, then they never going to overcome it. Because uh, drugs is only an aid. And it's not a cure. So I don't like to say that, like, well, this is a mental illness. Because then you're going to prescribe some drugs. And drugs is not, drugs are not a cure. Agreed? And like I said, let me say this. I am not a doctor. I am not a scientist. I am not a therapist. This is just opinions. I'm not telling nobody what to do. Seek your own medical help for whatever it is you need help with. And follow your own path. Look at people now with... What is that? What is that word? The side effects are bad. No, you can conquer mental health issues without medicine. Ah, girl, most people not trying to conquer no, conquer no mental health illnesses with illnesses without medicine. Girl, they have a prescription for every. <laughs> it's a prescription for almost every mental illness, and that stuff keeps people. Uh, demobilizes people a weight loss and diabetes drug oh ozen oh how you pronounce that girl i don't know how to pronounce that well i just take everything to the lord in prayer and i believe that any sickness illness and disease that you have uh God can help you with it. And sometimes people are trying to overcome an addiction, but they haven't tried to figure out why they have the addiction. You know, some people that are overweight or have addictions, it don't even have to be overeating or nothing like that. It could be something else. That they, it was a habit or something that, that that was formed as a child because of something. Like I used to bite my nails as a child and I still bit my nails as an adult. I still bite my nails every now and then, but like even right now, I'm messing with my nails. I'm picking at my nails. I'm breaking off my nails. That was something that I did as a child. Something made me start doing it as a child. Nervousness, scaredness, fear. 
just whatever made me start doing it as a child. So if I want to overcome something, I have to re- I have to try to figure out what made me start doing that or what is triggering that. People that overeat. Why did I start overeating? When did I start overeating? What made me start overeating? Like, did my mama push food on me? Was my mama obese? Did Was everybody in the house obese? Like, you have to figure out what triggered the problem. What's the reason behind the problem before you try to solve the problem? Because otherwise, you're going to keep trying to solve this problem. You're going to keep failing. And you're not going to know why you're failing because you haven't tried to figure out what's behind the problem. Agree to disagree. People want help without medicine. I was uh, going to school for sociologists. Some people want help without medicine. Not many. Some people want the medicine, girl. (laughs) I'm just... I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Sometimes it is trauma. As an infant, that's true too. Sometimes people can have trauma as an as an infant. But what's the solution to the problem? If they don't recognize it's a problem, what's the solution? If they just consider it a mental illness, then what's the solution? Some people don't want no solution because solutions mean hard work. Solutions without medicine means work. It means dedication. It means not giving up. Some people ain't down for their hard work. It means hard work, girl. Anyway. I can put on my pajamas now because I got y'all the light off. (laughs) What time is it? It is. What time is it? 11, 12. What time is it for y'all? Anyway, we had a good day today. Did y'all have a good day today? I enjoyed hanging out with y'all all day today. Driving with me. I don't know how long I'm going to be in Austin. I might change my mind and leave tomorrow. Who knows? I think I'll at least be here for a week, though. I wanted to see what the waterfalls was like. But we still haven't gotten that much rain in Texas. I wish we would have had more rain. I seen a little bit of the waterfall today. The water is higher. The water is higher than it was last year.
I put on my pajamas. Nine eleven here. God bless. Good night. Good night, Grizzly. Did y'all have a good day today? Did y'all enjoy the live streams? Those of you who have been in the live streams on and off today. Uh -oh. Did y'all enjoy the enjoy the live streams? Those of you who have been in it on and off today. Let me check my comments. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me today. Driving with me. Sharing with me. Fellowshipping with me. And I am going to call it a night. Anybody want to add anything? I am thinking of buying property near the woodlands. Is that a decent area for a colored person if you know? Uh, I don't know if you're the person that sent me an email asking me that, but I don't subscribe to those kind of questions you would have to do your research and contact a real estate agent and ask them that kind of question just because i'm from houston or texas i don't know all the areas in houston so i would suggest you contact the real estate agent can truly solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Anywho, anybody got anything else they'd like to say before I end the live? Yes, yeah, stay strong. Thank you, Jackie. I hope y'all have a good week, and I will see y'all tomorrow. I might take y'all with me to go get my... Well, I might just film a video. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I will be live tomorrow, several times tomorrow on all the channels tomorrow. Don't let the big bug bite. Girl, I ain't got no bed bugs. Oh, that's another thing I don't have. <laughs> Y'all was asking about critters. I don't have bed bugs. I don't have bed bugs and fleas and uh, I don't have none of that stuff up in my van, girl. 
I try to keep my van clean. I, I try to treat my van for any things that would probably potentially try to get up in here. But because a van is moving a lot and moving around and I don't I think it's less of a chance for something to stay put, even if something got in here. I think because you're moving every day. The longer you stay still, the greater the chances of something getting in, I think. I'm just saying, my mama said that, I know, I know, I know, Grizzly, I know what you mean. I know what the saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. I was just messing with you. I know, I know, mm-hmm, I know. Y'all have a good night. I'm going to give me some sleep. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm going to listen to the playlist tonight. Oh, let me let me share the playlist with anybody that wants to listen to the playlist tonight. We made a playlist on the other channel for music to listen to when we go to bed. I'm going to listen to this tonight. So y'all go check this playlist out and listen to it as y'all go to bed. This is what I'm going to listen to. And I will talk to y'all later. Good night. Bye. Thanks for watching. Love y'all.